what is up you guys welcome to illumination lab my name is justin and today i'll show you how i made the stylized effect within redshift in this video i'll go over the reference i use how i created the stylized look in the scene and the lighting i used to bring it all together i'm excited to show you this technique today we're gonna have a fun one with this one so without further delay let's get into it So for the references today, I used a few different ones here. Uh, I used a lot of references that were coming out of the 90s and 80s anime. Plus, there's a couple here that I really like the both the line work and then the colors that they have as well, too. So for this technique, I'm going to show you today. Almost all of these references are possible. There's usually three things you want to look for when using this technique. One is your color palette. So if you see at the reference at the bottom left, you have a uh, Sailor Moon uh, color palette here. So these color palettes were essential to the overall uh, look and feel of the anime itself. And so making sure that you stick to a specific color palette that is uh, what you're trying to focus on is extremely important because if you deviate from a specific color palette with this technique, uh, you can look uh, like <laughs> as something completely different with, with this. So color palette is huge with this technique. The second one is what you're actually using for your model. So for example, if we look at the reference at the top right, the cityscape, that uh, look within that piece there is going to look very different than the one at the bottom right, where it's a little bit more close up and it looks like more of a, a stylized architecture. And so even just subtle differences in line work and uh, again, color palette, is gonna make the biggest difference with this. With this technique, I think I've tried about four or five different scenes, um, and I tried to go for something different every time. There was one where I went more for like a 90s anime theme. There was another one where I went a little bit more futuristic and did like a, a cyberpunk one. And of course, lighting and your line work is going to be super important if you want to pull off a specific style but if you can control your color palette if you can control your line work like the the thickness of the lines or how many lines you have whether you're doing a city or you're doing a character or whatever ensuring that your line work is within the specific theme or what you're going for is very important and of course what you're actually using it on so i'll show you some examples here so for the first four here it's going to be more of a 90s theme and so as you look at these renders here i try to stick to more of a pastel color palette and so you can achieve the look a little bit better if you really hone in that specific color and then of course you can once you render it out you can add in a whole bunch of different effects and filters and you know that's what you see here at the last one but but at the same time now if we jump over here and we kind of tweak our line work and our colors we get a whole different effect so and as you can see with the van here, obviously colors, line work, and then sometimes even not touching a specific spot with line, if you just kind of keep it as is, you can kind of either create your own style or you can kind of go for something else as well too. And then the last one here, this is a render that I did of something that was completely not uh <laughs> 90s anime with with doing more of a steampunk building here and so i took a steampunk building from kit bash and then i applied those the pastel colors to the model here and then i just kind of 
transition into different colors depending on the weight of the specific object and so i was just kind of playing around with uh, the different effects and the lighting as well just to see kind of what i can get but as you saw in the beginning and then here as well there's a lot of different looks you can get but this is all using the same technique so again color palettes line work and uh you know kind of focusing or realizing what you're actually working on whether it's a van or you know a character or a scene it's super important to kind of realize what you're using it on and then how you're going to uh, convey a specific look uh, within this technique here so but that's pretty much it for the references let's hop into cinema 4d and go over this technique here all right so within kit bash here they have a kit here that is titled shogun and it's uh, a lot of older japanese buildings and a few different assets in general so i'm just going to pull a couple of these and import it into cinema 4d and i'm going to uh, use these assets that we import here to make a scene and uh, it's a it's a really good way to kind of show you this technique in somewhat of a fast fashion so again it really doesn't matter what model you use or what you're essentially doing but for right now i think i'll use these uh, cool assets within uh, kit bash here so so let me go ahead and import them and i'll see you in cinema 4d all right so i got the assets here that i want to use and so I'm just going to quickly kind of build up a, a scene here. I'm going to bring in a redshift camera and kind of just set up the camera to give us a good uh, composition within the scene here. And then, you know, I'm just kind of moving the assets around and moving these trees to kind of uh, get a nice look within this camera view here and uh, whenever you are importing assets uh, I only have two different options for trees here so if you're using trees multiple times you know feel free to kind of rotate them and adjust them to kind of create somewhat of a variety within the scene if you uh, just copy and paste them and don't really move them around <laughs> you're gonna get the you know the same tree and so sometimes if if someone doesn't necessarily see it initially i think uh sometimes the the look of the overall scene can kind of look not as natural as it could so you know just something else to kind of think about and look out for so so next up i'm going to bring in a landscape here and then just kind of quickly uh, apply it to the surface here underneath the house and then i'm just going to do the same thing over on this other side and then of course we're going to copy and paste this and kind of push it forward what i'm thinking is to kind of make a land portion and then also do a water portion as well to kind of create some cool highlights and then of course our our building up in the front here you know it has some canoes attached to it so you know it's obviously <laughs> meant to go in the water so we'll we'll bring in a cube here stretch it out and then i'm going to increase the segments as well uh just to make sure that when we do uh distort the cube with our deformer and our water uh we're getting more of a realistic look and not something that is very uh choppy or cut up because of the deformer here so 
And then to top off the scene here, what I'm going to do is bring in a area lights. I'm going to stretch it out and we're going to kind of use this as our background. And then I'm just going to bring in a background I made within Canva and then I'm just going to apply it to the light here. So we get a nice uh, little backdrop as well. So as I pull up the render view here, you can clearly see the <laughs> the backdrop I made here. It was uh, these uh, pink and purple, you know, night sky or even like a like an early evening sky where the you know the sun is just kind of going down, but it's a little bit more stylized. So uh, wanted to go for that because to kind of pull off this overall flat animated look I, I need something that is a little bit more stylized or it's gonna look uh, <laughs> look a little funky for us so all right so next up is this actual technique and so as you saw when we're importing assets all of the different colors and textures obviously import with the assets what we're going to do is we're going to have to kind of change a lot of these assets to pull off more of a um, stylized flats or just like a like some sort of anime look here so all right so i'm going to pull up the node editor here and then i'm going to go over and bring over a fresnel and then go over and bring in a wireframe so with the wireframe what you want to do is actually put it into the output here i'm going to go into input and surface for the wireframe and then for the fresnel what i'm going to do is also attach it to the displacement of the output as well and so now as we apply that here you can see the immediate change within the viewport and then what I'm also going to do is go over to reflection and turn that down to zero uh, just because we're again having a somewhat of a flat look to it and so I don't want any colors bouncing off of this specific material here so so to kind of keep it a little bit more flat what I'm going to do is just reduce down the reflection there so we're not getting any uh, color bounce here all right and to do that again i'm going to bring up this material again type in fresnel attach it to our displacement i'm going to go over here and just uh, kind of pick a, a pastel color here and then i'm going to go over to the wireframe bring that over and then i'm just going to attach it to our surface here I'm going to choose a darker color for this material and really with this too you can scroll up and down through these materials and see like you know what type of material it is or how dark it is and so sometimes what i'll do is i'll go over and do more of a darker color if it's a either a darker object or a heavier object and then I will do a lighter color for something that is a little bit smaller or you know something that is just going to have highlights here so again just doing the same technique I'm just going to attach the wireframe here and then I'm just going to kind of find a color that I like here I'm going to go with a dark blue since this has a normally a, a darker look to it as far as like the roof material goes so I'm just gonna select this dark blue here. Again, I'm going to go over into our Fresnel, attach it to our displacements, and then I'm just going to change the color slightly to more of a, of a lighter color here, so. Now for this material, this is the other part of the roof. So again, same process, go over the wireframe. You can always adjust the, the wires as well. So again, since this is traditionally a darker color here, I'm just going to find more of a, a darker tone here and just apply that. And then do the same thing with the Fresnel as well. And 
then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the Redshift render view and then you could kind of see initially here all the 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 flat colors and then you can start to see some of the line work here if you look a little, a little close to some of these these poles that are standing up here but you know we we can't see too much with our current lighting here so what i'm going to do is bring in a area light and then i'm just going to kind of play around with it within the scene and see kind of what what effects i can get and so what i'm actually going to do with this is i'm going to turn this area light i'm going to make it into a sphere just so it can kind of project throughout the scene a little bit better here and then what i'm eventually going to do with it is make a uh, a mini dome light with it so i'm going to bring in the same color as our uh, background here by just dropping in the png into our texture folder here and then what that's going to do is just kind of reflect and kind of bounce off the same colors here so you could see in the render view here on the ground i get this really nice kind of like a almost like a, a color wash here or a almost like a watercolor effect it's a little too dark for watercolor but it's kind of that 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 same sort of look where it's kind of smeared onto the the ground here and kind of gives us more of a um, illustrative or abstract look here so of course you can go and kind of play around with it as far as changing the exposure and that's going to give you a, a different look here so what i'm going to do is just kind of play around with it and see what kind of cool looks we can get with this one so All right, so that looks fine there. So I'm gonna keep that how it is for now. And then we're gonna bounce back to our colors here and keep uh, keep working on our colors. So uh, next up, I'm going to bring up this one here. Again, we're bringing in the wireframe and the Fresnel here. For this one, it looks like this texture here is going to be these planks here and uh essentially the dock and then also you know the walkway around this this place here so what i'm gonna do is more of a almost like a darker blue like a grayish blue here just because i think that will kind of help contrast versus our uh lighter blue that we already already established here and then what i'm going to do is just adjust the wire thickness so we get kind of a, a thicker look as far as our lines go so now what i'm going to do is hop over to uh redshift over here and then i'm just going to apply our water to our cube here And then I'm going to throw in a redshift tag to kind of add in displacement. And then what I'm going to do is bring up the render view again, just to see kind of where we're looking at in real time. So you can immediately see on the dock here, there's a lot of different line work on the dock. It's actually slightly too much. So what I'm gonna do is go back into that color here and then I'm going to kind of just play around with it and see what other looks I can get. I think I do like the one, but I'm going to uh, uncheck this box here and that's gonna get rid of a lot of those uh, lines within the planks here, so. All right, so now what I'm going to do is just go back into this lighting here just cause we have to Kind of work this lighting a little bit more to kind of fill up the scene here so i'm just going to uh change the projection settings on this area light here uh to kind of control exactly what kind of look or even what kind of colors we want on each part of our scene here 
and then I'm just going to have our this light here reflect our water and then I'm just going to bring in a displacer here and uh, add this displacer to our water to kind of give us more of a of a bumpy look here now I'm going to copy and paste this light here and then again this light is just going to be for our landscape and so hopefully with this this color here will just affect our landscape and we can kind of better control how the ground's gonna look like, so. As we move the area light, you can kind of see the immediate reaction of what the colors look like and you get a lot of really cool effects. So again, depending on what you're going for, you can obviously create a lot of really cool uh, stylized looks here and then as I bring the area light back you can kind of see that that nice pink and purple uh, come up so I think that actually looks pretty cool especially with that being the ground and then we have our a water here that's that's a nice kind of a dark color so it's a it's a nice contrast here so all right so I'm going to copy and paste bring in another area light and I'm going to move it off to the left side of the scene here just to kind of fill um, some light in to this, uh, this left portion of our scene. And then again, it's just, it's up to you as far as what kind of look you want to go with. But I think I'll, I'll go with somewhat of a lighter look over here again to kind of control a, the highlight situation as far as our ground goes. Um, yes, it is a little bit more uh, washed looking, but if I can control, you know, the, the highlights just subtly, I think that really adds a little bit more depth to the scene, even though we are doing <laughs> more of a, a, a 2D illustrative look as much as possible within a uh, <laughs> 3D software program. So, so I like that so far, so we'll just leave that as, uh, as is and continue on with uh, <laughs> our colors here so again with this technique you're just doing a lot of the same thing you're just you're really just identifying uh, what colors you're affecting and then you're adjusting that color depending on of course your your palette or what look you're trying to go for or if you're trying to establish some sort of cell shading with some sort of uh, blocky highlights again just kind of it's it's kind of a longer process to to do it like this but of course you can kind of control the scene and get some really cool effects this way so so i'm just going to continue on with this technique here and i'm just going to apply a few different colors here and i think mostly i'm going to go with more of a like a like a blue or kind of a um, like a darker a look up here in the front just because our background has some really nice blues and purples and so to help kind of differentiate or help the eye when you're looking at the render kind of see what's in the foreground what's in the background i think having a lot of blues up front or a lot of blues in our building and then having a lot of the, the purples in the back will kind of uh, really kind of help the scene pop out and give it a little bit more depth here, so. Now I'm just going to pull up the render view again and if you've seen my videos before you know that I like to bring up the render view as much as possible just because it just because it gives me a instant feedback of what the scene is looking like and so 
I feel like I can kind of manage the scene a little bit better that way if I know how the colors are actually looking uh, within the render view versus the actual viewport. And so I'll sometimes just kind of bring that up just to see how some of these colors uh, are interacting with the scene, so. All right, so I'm working on the top of this house here and then I'm just going to adjust some of the line work here just to kind of give it a of a thicker line just because it's a it's a heavier uh, material so again I'm gonna try and control as much again I'm going to try and control the line work and the colors depending on the material or the, the heaviness of the object so all right so this one looks like it's the side of this uh, structure here and then I'm just going to kind of adjust it so it's a have a, a bluish gray here to kind of to help differentiate between our other materials here and so i'm just going to play around with these colors here and see if i can get a uh, a nice uh, look here So next up, we got to change these boats here. So what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and turn off this box here. I increase the thickness to one. I think for the overall look, I'm going to go with uh, more of a like a like more of a bluer gray <laughs> if, if that makes sense i'm gonna try and get more of a, a bluer look here and then as we kind of work on the inside of the boats i'm going to uh kind of adjust this color to more of a lighter blue because it's a uh, because the the top here is going to be almost like a, a highlight and again we want to kind of separate out our colors here so we can kind of identify you know our our depth here our our highlights and our you know kind of our our darker areas as well too and so even though this isn't really detailed and it's more almost like cell shading i want to kind of block out those specific colors here so And then with the bottom of our bow, again, I'm just going to go with more of a darker look. And then I'm going to increase our our thickness to our lines here again to create a, uh, a denser look almost so. But after all that i mean that's that's pretty much how you achieve that specific effect i know for a long time i was looking for you know a few different uh, sketch and tune or you know um stylized looks within redshift and i really couldn't find out a <laughs> a way of going about a um a stylized look and so i just kind of came across this while i was playing around with redshift here and kind of found something pretty cool so but that's pretty much it for this scene here again i just kind of use these kit bash assets to kind of give us something to work with because the the main idea of this video was to show you the technique and it it really didn't matter what <laughs> you know model i was using it for and so but of course you can kind of play around with it create a lot of really cool looking styles 
of course like i said before if you can focus on your color palette your line work and you know have a good idea of what you're actually trying to convey or what style you're trying to convey you can pretty much do you know any sort of stylized look plus on top of that you can you know add in different filters when you export this out to you know different software programs so you got tons of options to help you create like a a look that you actually want so But as we jump over to our wrap up section today, what I'll do is I'll kind of show you a quick version of how I uh, brought in a more of a steampunk asset and the colors I applied there to kind of give us a more stylized look. So let's hop into the wrap up section and you kind of get a fast paced look of how I made this this other scene here. So. All right, so wrapping up the video, um, I was actually pretty excited to try this out. I, like I said before, I, I probably tried this technique on eight different scenes. I just wanted to kind of play around with, of course, the line work and the colors and really what I can get from this uh, simple, but you know, really kind of really cool technique here. And I feel like a lot of people can really play around with it and create something that is you know that is very different of course you could probably play around with a lot of uh, 3d textures and do some that is more of that flat illustrative look with a few lines and so i feel like you have a lot of control when it comes to that i'm sure there's other different textures or even ramps that you can put in and create a lot of really cool effects as well and then of course depending on what you're doing or what kind of look you want to do i'm sure you can you can get pretty creative with this and really kind of make something that is a little bit more eye-catching especially coming out of a of a 3d <laughs> of a 3d software program so i thought it was pretty unique to make more of a 2d look within a program that is more <laughs> uh, 3d oriented and then also use a render engine such as redshift that's you know kind of focuses on a little bit more like realism to kind of take redshift and uh you know do techniques almost similar to like an octane uh render and so Again, this is something that I was just kind of playing around with and stumbled upon. I know uh, in the past I tried to create a similar look to this, but I didn't know the necessary tools or the resources to kind of create this look. I also looked up, I tried to look up this on both YouTube and online and there's uh, some really cool creators uh, making some, some cool things, but I really felt like I didn't find really what I was looking for. Or if I did, you know, it's a, <laughs> there's a, a paywall behind it. So, so I just decided to kind of hop into the software program myself, play around with it and kind of see uh, what I can get here. So again, just wanted to show you a few different options of, of what you guys can do. 
and I'm sure you guys will will go into this and uh, adjust it yourself and make some really cool things out of it so hopefully that was helpful for you guys I enjoyed doing this like I said I, I made a lot of really cool scenes with this and again more just kind of playing around with it and see what kind of look I can get but I feel like I have a lot better understanding of of what it can do and then in the future of course I'll I'll go and kind of add in a few um, other other things as well to see again what kind of looks we can pull off within you know <laughs> cinema 4d and redshift so but just like that that's the end of the video I had a fun time with this one like always if you guys have any questions feel free to throw it in the comment section uh if not you know if you like this or you wanted to see more of something like this go ahead and give this video a like but other than that that's pretty much it you guys have a good rest of your day and i'll see you on the next one